You may be an audio engineer who's starting to build a career, get more shows, you're comfortable with mixing, working with bands, done some corporate gigs, but sound system tuning is a little bit scary. You can get speakers in the air and it's generally sounding good, but are scared of what's really going on under the hood. When I ask engineers what's stopping them from investing in this skill set, I get two answers. It's too hard and it's too expensive. I'm not going to speak to the first one today. I think you can learn it. You absolutely can. But the second one, I'm going to bust that myth today. What if I could say that you could build a sound system tuning rig that you could bring with you to any show and tune any system for less than $250? So I've got a fantastic resource for you today. I've compiled that into a one-page PDF. It's in my audio toolkit at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. You put in your email, send it to you. It's got some other resources in there. One of them is this page. It'll take you right here to a Google Doc that has all of the cheat codes. It's got what you need to get, the audio interface, the measurement microphone, the cabling, the software, and I'm going to step that uh, step through that today for you right here and go link by link. Thank you for joining me. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so this would be the Google Doc you get. It also has a PDF version, uh, and we're just going to step through the gear. First, you're going to need an audio interface. So just in case that's a new term for you, that is a device that is used to get a microphone or any other source um, into that box and it converts it into a signal that your computer can read. So usually it has a preamp on the front end, just like your consoles do when you're gaining up microphones. So it gets the microphones up to a reasonable level and converts it into a signal that your computer can use as data for the audio analyzer when tuning systems. It also functions, so, so this one is the Behringer Euphoria UMC204 HD, that's a mouthful, and, and I would plug in the measurement microphone for your system is what you use to capture the data into input one, and then you're actually going to take the, a loop out of pink noise or whatever test signal that you use from your audio analyzer software into input number two. So any interface is going to work. I just picked this one because it's cheap and reliable and has two inputs. So any interface you choose, you need at least two inputs. And then on the back, make sure you've got at least two outputs. And we're gonna talk about where those go in a second. So first you will need a audio interface. And this is the cheapest one that I found that will get the job done for you. Number two, you're gonna need a measurement microphone. This is the Dayton Audio EMM6. It is $69, very affordable. You can go all the way up to $600, like an Earthworks microphone or something. But uh, I, again, I'm not super concerned which of these other ones that are similar price range you get, just that you get one. Why I would choose the Dayton is that it includes a calibration profile with it. So every microphone, what we're shooting for with the measurement microphone is to be flat, for it to be neutral. So for it to capture sound and not impart a color or change the data in any way, you still got to put it in the right spot and point it at the right place, but the microphone itself is designed to be very tonally neutral from a frequency response standpoint. But it's impossible for $69 to make it absolutely razor flat, so they got it most of the way there. And then you load in a profile into your audio analyzer software, and it does the rest of the math to offset any anything that makes it not flat and brings it back down to zero. So the Dayton Audio has this. Another option, just in case that one's out of stock or something that will do you just fine, is the Behringer ECM 8000. And both of these options come with a mic clip. I'm not sure if the Dayton comes with the windscreen or not, but the Behringer does. You could, of course, order something and, and make this all work. Here it is. It does. There we go. It's got a nice hard case, a mic clip, and the windscreen, which is great to have when you're tuning outside. Your high end isn't going to be as accurate with that on, but you're not going to get these big fluctua fluctuations in level because that's what's going on. Uh, moving on, you're going to need cabling to connect the audio interface uh, to two places. You're going to connect it first uh, using the quarter inch, the TRS output, and then XLR into your console or directly into a speaker for that matter. So this is how you're getting your test signal out of your software through the audio interface and then out into the world over this cable. And you're gonna plug that into your console and put it in through your system. Um, so I like getting stuff at Sweetwater, like you said, the, the Behringer as well, cause it's got a, a two year warranty on a lot of their stuff. I've been with the same sales rep for 10 years, Dan Van Amerongen, he's awesome. Uh, they got a great review system and usually get stuff out to you if they got in stock very quickly. So anyway, so I would get that cable there. You can of course get it in different lengths. I wouldn't go any shorter than 10 feet for this cable cause it's gotta go from where you're setting your interface into a console. 
I wish I had a 15 foot option, but this is what we got. 10 is what I use and it's perfectly fine. And then we are going to need a cable to, to get our reference signal, uh, our measurement signal back in as a reference. So this is a TRS quarter inch cable. So going back to our Behringer Euphoria interface, it's going to come out. Uh, we have a main out of our first cable. It's going to go and then go to the XLR mail cable into the console and send it into our system. And then it's going to come out the right channel here and loop back into this second microphone input, the quarter inch in. We, of course, make sure it's on line level on this input. And that's going to be our reference signal. So a two channel analyzer system is going to compare the mic input number one, what's happening in your system with the pure reference signal that's being looped back and it's going to give you a transfer function or basically what's different between the two to give you the data and the software that we're going to use to do that is open sound meter i've been using this for a little bit less than a year now i also have smart by rational acoustics but it's crazy I, i'm not gonna say crazy expensive it is a incredibly robust and full-featured software it's for the advanced engineer but if you're tiptoeing into this asking uh to drop more than uh, you know four figures a thousand dollars on a piece of software um is, is is a big ask especially if you don't know like am i really gonna really get into this and use it a lot it's a steep learning curve and so um, they have a lot of great educational resources but if you're new why not start free? So Open Sound Meter is a free measurement software, uh, but you can, of course, donate uh, to Pavel, who's developing this. He's in Russia and has made some really cool stuff. I've used Open Sound Meter on shows small and large, and it's really stood up to the test. Uh, he's also got an iPad app if you want to use that iPad audio interface, and it's $49 in the App Store. But to get the full featured version of Open Sound Meter, which I got here, I can pop up. Um, all I gotta do is download and it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux, which is awesome. So uh, I can use this to do professional shows with free software. But what I'm gonna encourage you to do, uh, if you go back to the, the PDF to get the Behringer interface, the Dayton audio microphone, the two cables uh, totals about $213. And then what you're gonna have left from the 250 is $37. So I, I would highly recommend you donate that to Pavel if you download his software and really like it. And so for a half day rate, you can have a full system tuning rig. You start with that one microphone and then, okay, I wanna have two or three now, just pick you up another Dayton Audio EMMM6. Uh, and then for, again, for another, if you pick up two more microphones, that's less than 150 bucks. You've got a front row, a middle of the audience, a back row microphone. At that point, you need to get an interface that has more inputs. But again, if you're just run and gun, I need it cheap. Let's get it done for less than $250. This is a great place. Lastly, I want to note what's not listed here is, is a long XLR cable. You'll probably be setting up your system tuning rig at front of house, and you're going to need to put your measurement microphone out in the audience. And if you're working for a production company, they're going to have a big trunk or tub of XLR cable and just use one of those. So you can, of course, get your own. If I were to buy one for myself, I would get a 100-footer just so I can get it as far as I need to away from my audio interface. Second, a mic stand. Every show known to man is going to have a mic stand uh, for, for you to use, especially if you have a band performing or something like that. Again, you can travel with your own, but I've never shown up to a show uh, as an A1. I've never been expected to bring my own mic stand. Just on setup day, I grab one from the trunk and you're good to go. And number three, just to make sure this is crystal clear, you need your own computer. <laughs> so again, it can run a Mac, PC, or Linux. Um, there are other software options besides Smart. Like I mentioned earlier, there are more affordable, but they're all PC. Um, and so, which is great. PCs are great. My brain works better in Mac world, so I like that. So I love Open Sound Meter that's available on all platforms and can really work well for you. So I hope that's busted the myth of, of getting into sound system design and tuning is, is expensive. Almost every manufacturer out there that helps you make designs with their speakers, their software is free to download and make designs like MapXD or Sound Vision or Array Calculator. It's all free, which is amazing. And now we can get used to uh, running 
uh, measurements in real time in the field with the free audio analyzer that's going to get you professional results. So it is a great time to be alive, and I hope you invest in your craft. Uh, my name is Michael Curtis, and I I'm happy to share with this today. Please shoot me any questions. Let me know below what gear are you using in your rig. And so are you, have you really thought a nice, fancy me measurement microphone is worth it? Do you have a, even even cheaper two-channel interface that you found? To clarify, I'm not about just getting cheap gear just just to have cheap gear, uh, but I just I don't want price to be a barrier to entry when someone's trying to learn this. This stuff is 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 hard enough to get under our belts and practice with to begin with. So this hope this is helpful for you. You can get that resource, that one page PDF that walks you through uh, the entire uh, list of stuff you need to buy at produce uh, produced by mkc.com slash audio toolkit. It's also got a lot of other resources in there that I hope you will check out, like my audio math survival spreadsheet. It it is super nerdy and a lot of fun. I'm Michael. I appreciate you watching and I will catch you next time.